Love and Hip Hop ATL Shouty. Let's get it. <laughs> going on it's your favorite favorite auntie momo and we are back again for what is this this is love and hip-hop atl shouty season nine episode five a slippery slope um before we get into the review as always regular church announcements if you have not done so just yet please subscribe to my channel because i show sure appreciate you let me know you stop by give me a thumbs up and then uh, make sure your notifications are turned on so you will know whenever i upload new content um a couple of other church announcements first y'all i'm sipping on something good tonight courtesy of my co-worker y'all i'm sipping on some white claw mango tonight i'm a little fancy with it i pull in my little wine glass although it wasn't number 324 for this big ass can Y'all know I drink this shit in wine. So I put it in you know, a little glass. It's good because, you know, I'm trying to ease my way back into keto. And this is like three carbs, 170 calories. You know what I'm saying? Gluten-free. All that good stuff. So shout out to my coworker that told me to get this white cloth. My boo Amy. I sure appreciate it. Um, Hopefully everybody has gotten their little stimulus checks because I sure enough got mine. I give Trump a half of a half of a credit, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't hook the little bitch up with some, you know, a little stimulus. I've been waiting on my 40 acres in the mule since before a bitch was born. But you know what I'm saying? I take little old coins you sent to, to, to your auntie. So, I know some of y'all, that money is itching in your pocket. Because when outside open again, you want to be able to get out and do some stuff. So, look here. Let me get, let me let y'all know. First of all, you need something for your lips, right? And I done told y'all before, I don't have this lip gloss on now, but I did have it on earlier at work today. Shout out to Chocolate Girl Cosmetics. I don't know if it's cosmetics. I say cosmetics because I'm, 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 I'm picturing big for you. I'm calling it into existence, my boo. You know what I'm saying? Although she does not only do lip glosses, she does custom wigs. She does all kinds of little trinkets and stuff. So check out Chocolate Girl. I will leave her information down below. Um, I don't know how much the lip gloss is because she loved your auntie and so she sent it to me. But I will find out how much it is and I will put out the information down as well. We are all about positive vibes over here. Y'all already know I'm repping for my boo, Brianna Craig. Uh, uh, Briante Craig, excuse me, boo boo, I apologize. There's a coupon code in the description box right down below where you can get this shirt. If you're going in the crazy, I mean, if you're going crazy in the house, um, mental health is something that is weighing down on a lot of people right now. I am one of those people. I do deal with bipolar depression and I, I deal with it on a daily basis. And my emotions have been up, down, here, there, sideways with everything that's going on. So show your support for mental health. Get you a piece of merch. This goes towards helping to to fight the cause of mental health and and it's just it's just it's support it's support for a young black queen that's coming up doing her thing as is chocolate girl um check both of them out um for this dope ass shirt and many other shirts also shout out to forever lane fashion if you are looking for a cute little handbag and you need something big you need something little look here your auntie got it for you i believe this is the savannah bag look it's bigger than my head, y'all. And I got a big ass head. Nice purse. So if you're going out, you know what I'm saying? Zaddy taking you out. You know what I'm saying? You need a little something, something. You know, Zaddy taking you to a nice restaurant. And you never know. You might have to put your forks in the purse, you know? Um, they might have some little dope ass little containers that they put your sauce in. And you might have to put it in your purse. Auntie ain't trying to teach you how to be no klepto in no restaurant. I'm just saying. But look here, y'all. When I got the purse, I didn't know that my purse was pregnant. She had a whole baby. I was like, oh. So, after Zaddy 
take you out for the night on the town, you're going to have to get up the next morning to, to get your damn stamina back up because he done broke your back or whatever. And so you just take your little purse, put it around you, and y'all can go out and do something during the day. Zaddy and you can go for a walk or if you're meeting some new boo and y'all need to go out on a date. But because of this whole thing going on, y'all got to do a six-foot distance date. You got your little low purse. You know what I'm saying? Look here. I don't get paid for this advertising. I'm just hooking these sisters up because these sisters is hooking me up. So shout out to you. I believe baby girl's name is Stephanie. Forever Lane Fashion. I will leave the information down in the description box below. Again, ladies, when outside open up, get Sashay Shantae. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to leave them in the back in case you want to take a, a, a little gander at it to see, do I want this? Do I want that? Do I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to leave um, Sashay Shantae right back there. Or oh, I did a low, low display like I'm in Macy's or some shit. Y'all done took up a few minutes already on the intro and ain't even got into the doggone review yet. So look here, hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go and get right on up into it. So y'all, we already know this whole goddamn Armageddon going on. So everybody is still filming at home. They're little confessionals, right? So we start off with Kirk and Rashida. Rashida is getting ready to go on a little romantical dinner date with Kirk because they are celebrating 20 years of marriage. Um... It's nice, girl. He takes on his little motorcycle, little romantical ride. I like motorcycles now. At a point in time, I wasn't feeling motorcycles, but I dated this guy that had this motorcycle, although the motherfucker never took me on a motorcycle. He was too busy taking them hoes on that motorcycle. Let me stop, because I'm telling all my business. But I love motorcycles now. I just do. Mm. But anyways, they want a little romantical dinner, and he set it up. Their little meal was waffles, because when they first went out on their first date, they went to Waffle House. Although... I was a little disappointed, nigga. You could have had Waffle House come in and cater a bitch of steak and some damn hash browns covered, smothered, and chunked with a nice little old pecan waffle on the side. You could have had them come and cater the shit in, or you could have closed down a Waffle House. But you know what I'm saying? To each his own. It was cute. But look here. Did y'all hear the little tea going on with Kirk and Rashida, bitch? Word on the curve with them people them had said is that supposedly... Kurt got with Rasheed when she was like 16, 17, and he was 31. So niggas is wondering why they ain't comparing him to R. Kelly. You want to know why? Because he ain't pissing on bitches. That's why. Or at least if he is out here pissing on bitches, we don't know nothing about it. We ain't know nothing about it. That's why. Folk need to stay out of other folk business. I'm just saying, yes, it is a little cradle robin-ish, but... <laughs> Kurt just out here having a bunch of babies. He ain't out here pissing on bitches. That's why. Rashida does say um, she needs to go on vacation because you niggas is driving her crazy. So she wants to get all the girls together to go on a little ski trip. I have always wanted to go skiing. I'm still trying to figure out something to do to my 40th birthday. My birthday is June 27th, so ice going to be melted damn near everywhere I go. And plus this whole goddamn, this bitch is out here giving niggas viruses and shit. So... I don't know. I might have to postpone my birthday celebration until like November. Excuse me, y'all. This damn white cloth. Oh, that was so unladylike. But this shit good to the motherfucker. No. But yeah, I want to go skiing. I got all off track, y'all. My bad. So we got Sierra, um, her son Mason, her daughter Paris, and Shooter. They all going to meet up and have a little birthday dinner because, you know, she had a little attitude at the bowling party thing. No. No, that wasn't. That was for her son. So this is something different. This is a little birthday dinner with her child. She got this nigga a gift from Chanel. I was like, ew. Bitch, give me son of June 27. How did you go? But um, Sierra is telling Shooter that her daughter is being real disrespectful. She's been skipping school. She thinks that uh, maybe the kids are acting out because they're not together. She said that although I'm sure that your daddy and y'all kids would love to see me and your daddy hugging and loving and rubbing and kissing and all that, little boy Mason looking like, nah, mom, that ain't the move. I don't think that should be it. But Shooter is telling her, you need to stay away from that drama. You know what I'm saying? You just got, you got to stay away from that. You can't be around that. But word on the curb with them people and them has said is that Sierra daughter be, she's a little bully at school. That's what I had heard them people and them has said. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's a big old ass girl. I'm not saying that all big ass girls are bullies, but a lot of big ass girls I went to school with back in the day was some goddamn bullies. Not saying that she is, though. Y'all know what I'm saying, though. Shooter say he thinks the Sierra might be jealous because he told her about him and Kiyomi, but he ain't mentioned nothing about Cheyenne. Now, supposedly, you know her and Cheyenne is supposed to be cool. He ain't mentioned nothing about her. I'm like, okay. Now, you already know Sierra gonna have a little problem, even though she went a whole goddamn BK. She might have a problem about you dating somebody that she cool with. You know that bitch ain't got no sense. So, y'all, we get Jock going into his salon, Salon Echelon. Sharonda is there at the damn front desk, like the good guard dog that she is, telling Jock ass, what the hell is you doing here, nigga? You ain't been here in a whole year. Now, all of a sudden, you got these damn cameras here. Now, you want to come up in here like you running business or something? But I don't blame Jock. Jock, like, look at bitch. I'm just in here checking on my goddamn investment. I don't give a damn nothing about you. You can kiss my goddamn grits. Um, Alexa Scott ended up coming up there. Jock said he wanted to invite her to be on this panel that him and Kendra are putting together, talking to young girls about sex trafficking. Now, as you know, or as you don't know, Alexa Scott posted something a couple months ago about her being a victim of sex trafficking, and so Jock invited her to come out on this panel where she could talk with these other women about it, right? So, of course, she was down to do it. They actually um, had the panel and, like, a bunch of different women were there that were speaking on everything. There was this one lady that said she had had, what was that, 20? Um, she slept with 20 men a day for about 20 years of her life. She had had 15 abortions. She had STDs. She said that she was having second trimester abortions, and she was having, she was having to push her babies out. Now... Do I want to tell all of that? Let's just say I used to work in reproductive health services. And um, long story short, second trimesters, you are not typically awake during that. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that that woman is lying. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm not saying it. Um, if indeed something had to be pushed out of her, she didn't do it. She was asleep for that. Um, I'm just saying, yeah, and I'm gonna walk on, I'm gonna walk on off from there, cause I don't want nobody saying a damn thing to me. Don't come for me, cause your auntie ain't sent you. But she did say that she got into sex trafficking. The woman that got her into it was a, um, a daughter of a pastor of one of these mega churches. Now, Lord knows I love me some church folks. I love my church folk, but yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone too, cause once again, I don't want nobody, come, don't come for because I ain't sent for you. Another lady said not only was she being trafficked, but she was a trafficker. She would pick up girls from church, from the Lord's house. But you know, it still is all up, still is all up and down the damn pews of the doggone church. So I ain't even the, the least bit doggone surprised. Alexis um, ends up showing up. She was telling her story about how she was a runaway at 15, 16 years old. She met this guy that um, the guy didn't kidnap her, but he ended up holding her for hostage. Basically, she said she was forced to do anything and everything to the highest bidder. She had met this one guy. Guy seen her upset, dropped her off at the bus station, and that's how she was able to get away. Now, a lot of people feel like Alexis was lying. Nobody knows what anybody had to go through that was a victim of any sort of sexual assault. I will say that. Leave that alone because don't nobody know. But I will say this. What woman would lie about being trafficked? What woman would lie about having to sleep with hundreds of men? I'm just saying that ain't me. But um, Akbar V was there to um, support her. Y'all, I'm a little bit proud. I'm, a pr I'm proud of Akbar V for being there to support Alexis. Because a lot of times you see Akbar just going at it with other females. Like she the queen on the throne and all this other bullshit. But I was happy to see her there and supporting Alexis. And just being a real friend. And she was cute as hell again. I mean, damn Akbar. Get you some. Y'all, so we got Rashida, Mimi, Bambi, and um, Sierra. They all meet up in this little ski shop, and that's where Rashida tells them that she wants everybody to go on a little vacation to de-stress, to go out skiing or whatever. Um, 
Sierra was snatched in her bodysuit. Sierra's a dingbat, dingy airhead, but the bitch body is bought, paid for, and it is damn snatched. You better go, goddamn girl. That's all I can say about that. They asked who was all coming on the trip, but she just said, well, Spice is coming. And Carly Red is coming as well. Sierra said, last time I talked to Carly, that bitch told me her best friend was Karma and that she gonna come back and get me, so I don't know where me and her stand. Um, Y'all, later on afterwards, they all end up getting the word about Sierra's daughter getting jumped at school by that little girl and that girl's mama. I don't know if y'all seen that. It's on everything. Go back and look it up. Once again, word on the card with them people and them had said was that Sierra's daughter Paris was bullying this other girl. Girl went and called up her mama. Mama came up there to school and she was about that action. She was TTG trained to go about that life about her baby. And I don't blame her. I'm not gonna fight no kid. I shake shit out of a child come fucking with my oh I'm gonna shake the shit out your baby. But um no I ain't gonna put my hands like beat the shit out. No, I wouldn't do nothing like that. No, nah, that, that's overstepping the boundaries. But I get it. If you a mama, you protect your cubs at all times. I'm just saying. But Sierra says she know damn well her daughter ain't innocent. She know that her daughter has a little role that she plays in this. She pissed off because the woman stays in her building. You couldn't come knock on my door and handle whatever business that you needed to handle with me. You felt the need to go up there to the school and handle it with that child. But again... Don't nobody know the whole situation about everything that happened. You know what I'm saying? But I was proud to see her. It was like, I know my baby ain't totally innocent because I know she got some shit to do with this shit. But, um, y'all, later on, Bambi is at the house with her beautiful, big-head-ass baby breathing. That baby got a big head because my son head was big just like that. My son head still big just like that. He is so damn cute. He's so precious. But she's at the house with Scrappy getting ready to go scare y'all. This is the beginning as they getting ready to say. I'm sure by the last episode, we gonna, or maybe by the next episode, we're going to get it confirmed that Bambi is pregnant. We already know she's getting ready to have a little girl. Um, What else went on? Rashida went and met up with the girls before they actually went to go on the ski trip to let them know that Kirk's son, Le Kirk, got arrested for guns and for drugs. They feel like the police may have trumped up those charges. Y'all already know it's hard out here for a black man. And police is out here. They the number one in it. They worse than Rona out here to these damn black men. Um, They feel like the police trumped up charges because they tried to say like he had like a bunch of drugs on him. He had a sawed off shotgun, a silencer, two pistols, three grenades, Four bombs. Like, they put a whole bunch of bullshit on this young man that didn't need to go on him. So, Rashida, when she met up with the girls, you know, she met up to tell them, look here, I ain't gonna be able to go to ski trip with y'all because Kirk don't want me to leave him here to deal with all this drama. So, I got to stay here and deal with all this drama because y'all know these niggas can't stand on their own without <laughs> without they goddamn wives and they goddamn life. But, um... When everybody meets up to go out, it's Spice, Bambi, like I said, Carly Red, um, and Sierra. Cha, of course, um, Bambi got to be the first one to say something petty, like, oh, I ain't seen this duo in a minute talking about Carly Red and um, and Sierra. So she was like, you know, we just going to pray on that. Hopefully we can all get along. Ain't going to be no problems, no none of that shit. So they all get on the road. Um... And Sierra's telling them everything about what happened. Now, Carly is saying in her green screen that if it was her and her daughter got jumped in, in that situation, she wouldn't be going out on no damn vacation. She would be right there at home with her daughter or her daughter would be right there with her. Look here, Carly. I don't agree with you on nothing else, but that's one thing I agree with you on right there. If that happens to my child, I got to be right there by him. I don't know what it's going to do, but it's for my own comforts, okay? That's all I got to say about that. But, um, child, Bambi start throwing up on the damn bus. Once again, we know her ass is pregnant. This heifer going to say she can't be pregnant because she breastfeeding. Bambi, now look here. It's less of a possibility because the breastfeeding does slow down certain hormones and stuff like that that can cause you to get pregnant. But Bambi, it's not foolproof, baby. The only way you're not going to get pregnant is if you don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Or you got some good, good birth control. I mean, I'm that good, good birth control. But child, yeah, bless her heart. 
Bless the heart. So they tell Bambi, when we get to the damn hotel room, bitch, you're going to have to take a pregnancy test. Bambi's like, I take one of all you bitch take one. they like, oh, <laughs> I know ain't nothing going on around here. So they try to make it seem like on the next episode that Sierra is pregnant, which she could be. I don't know. Um, Sierra ends up getting a text message from Shekinah saying that she on her way. Now, when Spice seen that, Spice turned her little nose up with it. Like, she mad at the mother. Like, I don't, don't want to go down with that bitch. Her and Shekinah got their own little issues going on. We're going to see what happens um, from that. Um, y'all can already see. I'm trying to get this over with. Y'all look here. Next up, we got Scrap and Cheyenne, y'all. Now, Scrap and Cheyenne, they over there at the house and they chilling, right? Scrap tells Cheyenne that he invited KK over there because he knows that they got beef. He want their ass to sit down and work out whatever the hell issues that they got because you can't be sitting up here beefing with my damn mama. Girl, they got issues because this help for Cheyenne was supposed to pay her part of the phone bill because this bitch is on a family plan with KK. Hold on. Cheyenne, ain't you a realtor? Bitch, you can't afford to pay $60 a month for a good old Metro PCS plan. You on a family plan, which means if KK don't pay her shit, your shit turned off. Girl, now, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm like, what grown-ass woman in her 30s is on another woman family plan? And y'all ain't even for real, for real family. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But KK mad about that. KK said, you said F me, bitch. So it's F you too, bitch. I'm going to need you to come up off your $40 for your doggone your bill or whatever the hell it is that you got to goddamn do child they going back and forth then kk gotta pull out her patty pass she asked cheyenne well did you tell scrap about a uh, shooter and the episode ends from there now cheyenne did say that this was the time that she wanted to go out public about her and shooter but shooter got everything going on with his baby girl parents getting jumped in school so she didn't feel like it was the time to do that but y'all the episode ended from there with kk putting it out there basically that cheyenne and shooter got something going on and scrap was kind of looking like damn like what the fuck now if scrap de leon does get mad what you getting mad for Y'all grow, I mean, no, y'all didn't grow up together. So it ain't like you've been fighting her battles your whole life. It ain't like she had to go get her big brother because her big brother's going to fuck somebody up. They said something to her. Come on now. What you going to do? Fight the man? Did y'all, it's just too much. It's just too much. But look here. Y'all already know if it was anything that I missed, drop it down below and let me know. Y'all, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Wash your hands. Drink your water and your auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Oh, don't forget, join me tomorrow night, Friday night, sip and chill. Y'all already know how y'all auntie do. 910. That's where I'm gonna be. Elbow bump. Mm, I'm out.